Let's talk about five new hair restoration treatments that you need to know about. Each year it seems we're inundated with news of cutting edge treatments that claim to be the next big thing. They come with a lot of hype and lofty marketing promises. Which ones impress and which ones do I think are fads? Stay tuned to find out which treatments are worth your time and your hard earned money. The first new hair restoration treatment that we're going to talk about has actually been around since the 80s, but it's now seeing a bit of a renaissance. So let's jump into it. Tretinoin or all trans tretinoic acid is best known for its use as a topical acne and wrinkle prescription medication. It encourages cell turnover, getting skin cells to normalize their cell turnover, encouraging keratinocytes to behave better. It's not an obvious candidate drug for hair regrowth. Back in the 80s, it was found that topical tretinoin enhanced the efficacy of topical minoxidil, meaning that it made minoxidil work better when both were applied together. So much so that patients found they could get the same results with once a day application of tretinoin and minoxidil compared to two daily applications of minoxidil. At the time, no one truly understood the mechanism or how tretinoin was helping with hair regrowth. Theories were that it might increase the absorption of minoxidil or increase blood flow. Paired with the small sample sizes of the studies, its use never really took off. Well, we now know that tretinoin actually enhances the minoxidil response in androgenic alopecia by upregulating follicular sulfotransferase enzymes or SALT1A1, the enzyme in hair follicles that's needed to activate topical minoxidil. In one study in 2019, 43% of subjects initially predicted to be non-responders to minoxidil were converted to responders following five days of topical tretinoin application. Should you try it? Maybe. Tretinoin enhances the effects of topical minoxidil and works best in androgenic alopecia. It might be worth a try to see if you can get more out of topical minoxidil or if you wanted to try a once a day application of topical minoxidil. But be aware that tretinoin can be irritating to the skin. Interestingly, tretinoin seemed to work really well for some people on its own. In the original 1986 study, one participant found that tretinoin alone worked to reverse hair loss she'd been struggling with for more than 20 years. These are what we call outliers. We still don't know why some people respond so well to tretinoin, and we can't predict who will be the best responders. Does tretinoin also help oral minoxidil. It's possible, but probably not. Minoxidil needs sulfotransferase enzymes to activate, so applying tretinoin may have some benefit. But oral minoxidil appears to be activated by salt enzymes in the liver and the blood platelets, so adding topical tretinoin probably won't have a big effect. For more information on oral minoxidil, check out feelconfident.com. The next new treatment making the rounds for hair loss is botulinum toxin known as Botox. It turns out that by relaxing muscle, you can actually help combat hair loss. One theory into how it works is by way of increased vascularity that results from relaxing the frontalis, temporalis, periauricular, and occipitalis muscles, with Botox leading to increased blood flow, which could help flush out DHT or dihydrotestosterone. By reducing DHT, you might help reduce that miniaturization of the hair follicles that typically occurs. It's a known phenomenon that increased androgen activity is seen in tissues under chronic inflammation, contraction and pressure so there is some logic behind the treatment. Also models show that when the occipitalis and the frontalis are contracted the tensile patterns that are generated across the galea closely align with the patterning and progression of male androgenic alopecia. Should you try it? Recently small pilot studies do show that botulinum toxin might be an effective management strategy for androgenic alopecia. However larger studies that are controlled and double blinded are needed to see if you can actually make a difference with this modality. Hair loss therapies are particularly prone to patients rating placebos as effective, but this newer off-label use of Botox might prove to be a helpful therapy to pair with other treatments for androgenic alopecia. Botox is less expensive than other therapies and it's quite safe when performed by a professional. Our third new treatment for hair loss is a device called the 
Alma Ted. It claims to be a targeted ultrasound therapy that can regrow your hair. Is it worth trying and how does it work? Alma Ted uses low frequency ultrasound to promote hair regrowth and Alma claims it's effective against non-scarring alopecia. They promote it as a trauma-free, quick, simple, and delegatable type of treatment. Some of my colleagues offer it as a less invasive option for hair restoration. We are not entirely sure about its mechanism. One hypothesis is that the ultrasound causes vascular dilation, which increases blood flow, potentially flushing the amount of DHT in the area and bringing in more growth factors. But this theory is far from proven. Does it work? The company's before and after images do do appear to show some increased growth at first glance. But as you look closer, you quickly realize that lighting, head positioning, and photo coloration have not been well controlled for. And this is my pet peeve with most before and afters, whether they're surgical or non-surgical, whether they're put out there by companies or by individual doctors. And Alma Ted is quite expensive at over a thousand dollars per treatment. And they recommend three treatments to see results. It's a big investment for something that may not work for you and that is still quite experimental. A read through Reddit shows that there are some anecdotal claims from patients saying that yeah, it worked to a degree, but it didn't quite live up to expectations. Also, some patients say that it's not completely painless as the power of the handpiece may be irritating. It's definitely not a replacement of classic medical therapy for hair loss and it's also not a clear alternative to PRP. I'd wait and see on this one. We left the best two for last. Our fourth and fifth new hair loss treatments are fascinating. These are signaling molecules that have been recently discovered from the same laboratory. Both were discovered by the Plicus lab at UC Irvine. They're called Scoob3 and Osteopontin. Last year in 2022, Dr. Maxime Plicus made international headlines after his team discovered that Scoob3 restored hair growth in bald mice. Preliminary results suggest that it can do the same with human hair. How does Scoob3 work? It has everything to do with the dermal papilla cells. These cells live at the bottom of each hair follicle and send signals that let hair know to grow. These exact signaling chemicals have remained a mystery until now. Transforming growth factor beta ligand, Scoop 3 is one such chemical that is secreted by papilla fibroblast cells in restoring hair follicles and is responsible for hair growth in mice. Really promising is that Scoop 3's expression and hair growth induction is partially conserved in human scalp hair follicles. In Plicus's words, we reveal that the Scoop 3 signaling molecule, which dermal papilla cells produce naturally is the messenger used to tell the neighboring hair stem cells to start dividing, which heralds the onset of new hair growth. What really excites me is that the research behind these incredible potential treatments is robust and heavily peer-reviewed. From a scientific standpoint, it really does not get much better than that. Some of the research was actually funded by the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Go Zuck! Our second potential hair growth therapy from the Plicus lab is a natural naturally derived signaling molecule, osteopontin. Osteopontin is responsible for hair growth in a hairy nevus. And a hairy nevus is a type of mole that you're actually born with. It's typically dark, the pigment is derived from a high concentration of melanocytes, and it's covered in coarse hair. Osteopontin is the signaling molecule produced by senescent, which are non-dividing and non-proliferating melanocytes, that causes normally dormant and diminutive hair follicles to act Activate their stem cells for robust growth of long and thick hairs. The Plicus lab is using a very clever strategy for finding new hair loss therapies. They're looking for naturally occurring molecules that already regulate hair growth, then seeing if they have the potential to be used as a therapeutic. It's great science, which is exciting to see in the world of hair regrowth. The next step for osteopontin and Scoop 3 is clinical trials. Human trials on Scoop 3 are expected to begin later this year and trials with osteopontin will likely follow. What would a potential treatment with osteopontin and Scoob 3 look like? Per Dr. Plicus, most likely these treatments would be micro-injected less than 
a millimeter beneath a person's skin, a fairly painless process that would have to be repeated periodically to maintain hair growth. A lot of people are really interested in these two molecules as therapies. Patents have been filed and Dr. Plykis, the researcher, and Dr. Reisman, a hair transplant surgeon, have co-founded a biotech company called Amplifica Bio to commercialize these discoveries. Hopefully, we'll see promising clinical trial results in the very near future. I plan on starting a podcast and I was thinking of inviting Dr. Plykis onto the show as a guest. Do you guys think that's a good idea? Let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. And I'll see you in the next one.